Joining us now is the executive director of Hazone Detroit, Ren Hack, is back with us once again to talk about an upcoming event uh, happening on January 16th from 6 o'clock to 8.30 at the Berman Center for the Performing Arts at the Jewish Community Center located on, on Maple Road in West Bloomfield. Ren, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Tyler. So good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you as well. So you got an event that's coming up. Uh, it's on Sunday, January 16th from 6, 6 o'clock to 8.30 p.m. Uh, called uh, called uh, Elements of Life. Tell us a little bit about this event. So it's entitled Elements of Life, Moving Together with Nature, Artistically Experiencing the Beauty of Tuba Shvat. And it's an interactive, sensory-rich theater performance showcasing the elements that foster the life and growth of a tree. So for those who are in your audience who may not know what the holiday of Tu B'Shvat is, it's the holiday of the trees in um, within the Jewish religion. And it is a time where in Israel, you're outside and enjoying, enjoying nature and enjoying trees. Here, it's a little bit different. We're not, uh, we're hopefully outside uh, show, snowshoeing and cross country skiing and whatnot, but we're not planting trees at this point. But it's an important, uh, we feel it's an opportunity for us to highlight the importance of what the elements have to do in the growth and fostering the health of our trees. Um, and by elements, I mean fire, earth, water, and wind. And, and, and go ahead. Oh, please continue. Sorry, I interrupted. I was just going to say what we know is that the seed of a tree comes with all that it needs to grow, except for what the elements do to it. So it can grow. It it it, it has its DNA and and all all that it needs to reach full growth except the elements play a key role in whether it will truly reach its its full potential. So we decided to go in a, a very different direction for Hazone, um, using arts and culture and dance and movement and choreography to be able to tell the story of how elements play a key role. And it's, an, it's, an interesting way, it's an interesting way to go about that, too, because it is so immersive. And it is an, an educational opportunity, but it's also a celebratory opportunity. It kind of combines elements of both of those together uh, for a holiday that may not be very well known. I didn't know. I, I had never heard of Tuba Shabbat uh, at all before uh, having this conversation. And, and so, uh, obviously, you, you, you mentioned what the holiday is based upon, what the message of the holiday is. What is the significance uh, of this holiday in the Jewish faith? Uh, or, or, and for both those that maybe practice Judaism or, or those that are just around other people in the Jewish community based on where they live, or even those that are just interested, why would something like, how would something like this upcoming event on January 16th uh, be important for them to learn the significance of this holiday in Judaism? So, and, and this truly is for anyone. Um, you don't have to be, you definitely don't have to be Jewish yeah. to appreciate the meaning of Tu B'Shvat, which for us in American society, um, and especially in the uh, communities that live winter, this is a real reflective time. This is a time to go inward, a time to slow down, a time to plan. Um, and, and so Tu B'Shvat allows us that reflective time. And it also is, is a period where it, it makes us conscious. It's an opportunity to raise consciousness as to the role that nature plays in our lives and to appreciate that. It's, it's about appreciation. It's about um, blessings. And so normally, pre-COVID, we would have what's called a Tubishvat Seder where we come together for a meal, we come to bring community together, we celebrate uh, the holiday collectively, and we also eat um, specific um, fruits and nuts, and it's, it's wonderful. That's not going to happen this year. We have, we have COVID to pay attention to, and so what we decided, it, it gave us an opportunity to go into a completely different direction and the Charrick Gallery, which you're perhaps familiar with, which is at the art gallery yeah. at the Berman, at the JCC, 
is having an exhibit called Environmentally Speaking. They're bringing in 19 artists from all over the country who collectively read a book called All That You Can Save. And it's an, a book of essays on the environment and the climate crisis. And what they then did is these individual artists created an art piece that spoke from their perspective on what they had read. And so the gallery is, um, is going to be open. And what, what happened was they were telling us, because we normally do the Seder, and so they called us and said, hey, you're going to do your Seder this year. And we're like, no, not this year, unfortunately. And they began talking about what they were doing. And for us, it was like, oh, wow, this is such a great opportunity to connect to and do something on our own. So one of the artists, actually, Laura Earle, is the, she is also not only an artist, but the curator of the environmentally speaking uh, exhibit at the Cherry Gallery. She worked with us and literally created sculptures for each of the elements. So there's a sculpture for fire, there's a sculpture for earth, water, wind, and then she also created a sculpture which is called the tree of life in judaism the tree of life is our foundation it's our recognition of the role that nature plays in our lives and that that the blessings that god has has provided us so it, it we just started flying from that um in the sense we took the environmentally speaking exhibit and we're like okay what can we do um recognizing we are all about the environment and sustainability. And so this is messaging for us in a very different way, but in a absolutely incredible way, because we not only have sculptures, but we have one of a kind designs that were made for our dancers that uh, are made from all natural fibers, that were dyed from natural ingredients, that just emblematically show what that particular sculpture is about, what that, um, it's, it's a demonstration of the element and the music is specifically choreographed and the lighting, it's just, it's an, it's an incredible performance and something we're so excited to be able to message in a way that we've, we've never done. And so it's, and also I just, I wanna make sure that um, your audience recognizes that while we say it's six to eight thir through 8.30, it's on the half hour, you okay. can sign up. We're only allowing 20 people in at a time so that again, we're as careful as we possibly can. Um, people will be let in one, at one entrance, will be let out a different exit, the next group will come in. We are requiring masks to be worn, but Come and celebrate with us because it's uh, here we are in the middle of snow and some ice and but the trees are still doing their work we're joined by ren hack the executive director of hazone detroit joining us on the megacast if you are interested uh, in attending this event and seeing uh, elements of life moving together with nature uh, in celebration of tuba shavat uh, that, that event is sunday january 16th from six o'clock to 8 30 p.m it will uh, follow the opening reception uh, and unveiling of environmentally speaking at the janice cherick gallery over at the jewish community center located in west bloomfield you can learn more information and, and get tickets uh, for the event of course as ren had said in uh, half-hour increments between 6 o'clock and 8.30 for the main show at the Berman Center for the Performing Arts by visiting Hazone Detroit's Facebook page, facebook.com slash Hazone Detroit. Again, that is facebook.com slash Hazone Detroit. Uh, and, and so, ran through this performance, through the, of, of course, environmentally speaking, the uh, exhibit over at the Janice Cherick Gallery. Uh, what are you hoping is is the takeaway from people in our, both in the local Jewish community, but also others in the community that will be attending this event uh, to learn not only about Tuba Shavat, but also learn about the messages of this holiday as well? I think we, we hear a lot of dire information out, uh, in, out, out in the world in regards to the environment. This is This is an opportunity to celebrate individual perspectives, celebrate the hope that we have. We, we all have the ability to do something. We all, the artists are doing their work in creating 
incredible artwork that that is representative of their you know as i mentioned their perception of what the environmental crisis is going this is when you when you see not only the exhibit but also the performance it is not like oh i can't believe the world is going to you know in a basket blank in a basket it is it is like wow how beautiful our world is how fortunate we are to be in this incredibly you know this incredible dynamic ecosystem and it's it hopefully leaves you with a wow factor and it leaves you with a hope and it also leaves you with i want to be involved in this i want to be involved in this incredible world and i want to leave it better for the next generation for when that seed becomes a tree in 70 years may may I, may i have done my part and so, Ren, how does holding an event like this and immersing the community in the messages of, of Tuba Shavat uh, and, and this particular holiday through an event like this, how does that apply to the overall mission of your organization in Hazon, Detroit? So our work is trying to create a healthier, more sustainable world for all. And this is one piece of our education, our messaging. No, it's not, uh, we're not um, digging up bags of compost and delivering seeds and compost to people for their gardens. And no, we're not, re we're not teaching people how to recycle plastic. We're, we're using a very different vehicle for our messaging. And I think it takes a lot of different types of messaging and a lot of different formats and templates, you name it, we've, we've got to be really creative and ideative in how we send out the message to the world of, hey, listen, let's, let's, let's gather together and make sure we leave this better than how we found it. Or let's, let's just leave a better world. Well, Ren, we appreciate so, your time, and, and thank you for uh, joining us to tell us about this upcoming event. Thank you, Tyler. Always wonderful to be on. Thank you so much for allowing us to have the space to give out the message and join us on Sunday.